Next up, I want to start taking a look at animation behaviors. And these are scripts that you can add to animation nodes in Mechanism to do something, you know, hence adding a behavior. It looks like I spelt it wrong there. Uh, we'll fix that later. But anyway, adding some sort of functionality or behavior to an animation. And I've got a little demo here set up, of course. Let's go ahead, we'll take a look at the animator here. And I have three idle animations. And if we go ahead and actually take a look at them, uh, so we've got the idle one here. So here's the idle one. Uh, basically, he just breathes and then he does like a big yawn stretch. Pretty cool. Then we have the breathing one, which is you know, shorter, it's just the breathing part. And then we have idle one, which is just the stretching part. Now it'd be cool if I had actually much more, I guess a vast array of different idle animations, but these three are gonna suffice for what we want. So I've gone ahead and set them up here into, well, basically a little bit of a list here. We have uh, the idle, the idle one, and just the idle breathing. I've gone ahead and made an integer parameter, and I've called it idle state. So it just basically takes an integer and what I want to do is be able to have some sort of random number generated and play the animation that is corresponding with it. So I'm just going to call this, you know, this zero, this one, this two. And I don't want to have to go out and in my player controller or anything like that to try to generate the random number there. I want Mechanism to generate the random behavior for me or the random number for the behavior for me. And it's pretty easy because as we see here when we click on our nodes, uh, we have this add behavior part. So I'm gonna come back out to the base layer here. I've gone ahead and created a substate, and I'm gonna add the behavior out here. And there's a couple ways you can do it. One, you can just click on it and say add behavior. I do already have one made here. Go ahead, jump into that folder. And you can add it that way, or if you want, go ahead and remove that. You can create your own from scratch. And I'm just going to call it, uh, I don't know, random idle. Or oh, rand idle, that sounds good. And of course, we'll go ahead, we'll create that script. And click on it, shows you where it's saved. I want to put that in my animation behaviors. And let's go ahead and open this up. So it's got all of the methods that we need here. And they do have some documentation with it. A little bit of a comment on the top. And the one I'm going to use is the on state machine enter. And of course, if you want more information on these, you always have the Unity documentation. So if you highlight the method and on a Mac hit command, a Mac hit command apostrophe or control apostrophe on Windows. I'm not sure what it's going to be on Linux. And it will open up the documentation, which you can click on, get a little bit more about it. You can actually just go straight to the uh, state machine behaviors. but I already know the one that I want. So I'm gonna go ahead, jump right back in. And what I wanna do is go ahead and generate a random number. So I'm gonna store that first. I know it's an integer, so I'm gonna say int rnd is equal to random dot range. And I know I have three animations and I'm just gonna cheat here and say zero to three. I know I could come up here, make some uh, variables up there, but this is just a demonstration. I'm gonna go ahead and just use that way. Great, so now that I, I can get a random number, I wanna know what animation to play from this. And since one of the parameters that is being passed into us is the animator itself, we can use that to say animator dot set int. Uh, the integer that we're gonna be passing in is rnd. And I just have to quickly look here to see what I called it again, what I call it, idle state. So I'm just actually gonna copy that We'll come right back in. I'll paste that, we'll save it. And let's take a look at it one more time before I do it. So it comes in, it's gonna pick a random number and the number that it picks is gonna to correspond to the animation we should play. So I've already gone ahead and set up these transforms. So if the idle state is equal to one, I'm gonna play this one. If idle state is equal to two, I'm gonna play this one. And if idle state is equal to anything else, I will play this one. Then afterwards, it just goes to the exit. And this little arrow here just means that I have it uh, doing a transition back to itself. That's just so I have this infinite loop of uh, idle animations. 
So let's go ahead and check this out. We'll go ahead, hit play. First time through, we got a zero. Go ahead, let it play right through. And hopefully we'll get a different number this time. And we got a zero again. Well, that's okay, we'll just sit here and watch it go through again. <laughs> uh, I should have picked shorter animations. Come on. There we got a two this time. And as we see, it's playing the, just the regular breathing animation. I got a two again. Obviously, if you have more animations, there's much more variations going to be spread out for you. Wow, what's that? Four, th four twos in a row? And back to a zero. And there you go. There's a very simple example of how to create an animation behavior. And these things can become so powerful later on. There's so many things you can do with it. Remember that you can actually go out and grab references to singletons or anything else in your scene. The world is your oyster and all you've got to do is go out and take it. Anyway, that's it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Go ahead and give it a thumbs up if you did. And I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye. So if you like the video, go ahead and hit that subscribe button down below. It really does help me out here on YouTube. And go ahead and follow me on Twitter. You're a pretty chatty guy over there. When I'm not walking through a forest. Or being stalked by eagles. And falcons. Lions, tigers, and bears.